All right, welcome back for another episode of Dollar Bin Digging. This is the video and article that I do for comicbookinvest.com where I talk about those books you can still probably find tucked away in those cheap boxes, those discount bins, wherever you're finding your cheap comics, whether they be at half price books, yard sales, dollar bins, at your LCS, uh, like I said, wherever you're finding your cheap cheap books. These are some things you might still be able to find based off of some of the recent news, some announcements, things going on in the actual comics, if you take the time to actually read them, and all that kind of fun stuff. Hopefully you're enjoying this series as well as everything else here on the channel. Please let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you hit that alert button so you don't miss anything, and keep telling your friends so we can keep growing this channel. And if you want to see the books that I got for you this week, just hang on for a few seconds after the intro, and I will be right back. Alrighty, so for this week, let's just start off with the news. Let's see what we got in the news that might give us some books that me might, might want to go and look for. Uh, some new comic book announcements, some titles we're going to be getting coming up. First up, we have Marvel announcing a new Red Band Werewolf by Night uh, series. It's going to be full of blood-soaked action. Uh, this is not the first time that Marvel has decided to go the more, the more mature route with Werewolf by Night, which is why I think we have an angle we can play with this. You're not going to find uh, Werewolf by Night's first appearance in a dollar box. It's just not going to happen. So again, we have to take a different angle. And the angle I'm taking on this one is that you might be able to find that original mature series that came out back when Marvel was doing the Max line. So Dead of Night, Werewolf by Night was a limited series. It ran four issues. And uh, there are actually some pretty awesome covers on this series. I think I might have talked about these before, but it doesn't hurt to be reminded about them again. Uh, here is cover A. It's pretty gory. It's in your face. And then look at these other covers here. All of them are really solid, in my opinion, from issue two to number three to number four, which takes like a different kind of like vibe, different style, almost Japanese uh, uh, tapestry art almost on that last one. Uh, I like them all, but keep an eye out for all of them. Uh, and you might be able to find these in cheap boxes. And if you do, they actually might sell a little bit better than you might actually expect. Uh, recent copies of this series have sold for, you know, set 40 to 50 bucks. And you can see issues three and four, like random issues could sell for best offers on 20 bucks. So we're looking anywhere between five and $10 an issue is what you can kind of been seeing selling, uh, as of late as, but as far as asking prices go, they might even be a little bit more when you have, uh, individual copies looking for 12 bucks, 20 bucks, even $30 here and there for some of these issues. Yes, they're not selling. They're sitting there asking that price, but they may get it. Who knows? Point being, look for this series in the cheap box because it has been overlooked for quite some time. Maybe you find yourself a nice little gem when you go out there digging. All right. Uh, pivoting away, for, I guess, from the comic book announcements, let's go into some of the movie rumor uh, stuff, some of the rumored angles we might be looking at. Uh, the fact that the Thunderbolts movie, which we've been waiting for, seems like forever now for, uh, may actually be a secret backdoor way to actually be a Dark Avengers movie. It's possible, uh, depending on how you look at it. I mean, basically all the characters of the team do have like a Dark Avengers kind of tied to them uh, in a sense that uh, you have a Captain America, you got a Black Widow, etc. Like there seems to be like a trade in character for each uh, member almost. but. Dark Avengers? Yes, no, maybe. I mean, this rumor goes so far as to say we may, might even see um, Osborn show up. I don't know if we're going to see Norman Osborn show up in a Avengers movie first, as opposed to a Spider-Man flick, but who knows? Who knows where we're going to go in the MCU? Point being, doesn't hurt to uh, be reminded of this and look for that Dark Avengers one, because this could still get you a couple of bucks. It's been a while. This has been on the spec cycle on and off before around the bend over and over again so uh this is one you're probably not going to easily find anymore for cheap but doesn't hurt to remind you of it that you might be able to still find it out there uh, i mean there are second prints for this as well as uh, i think there's like a midtown variant etc but it could still get you 10 to 15 bucks you can see some recent sales and asking prices there's some auctions down five six bucks they're starting prices uh that you can get this for cheap or around 15 dollars and buy it now it's so again, it's not a super duper expensive book. It is one you might be able to dig out there for a few dollars, but 
you know, who knows? You're taking a chance. This is a rumor after all. No formal announcements or anything like that. So please keep that in mind. But rumors can be fun and rumors can give you stuff to go and dig out of those boxes because the hobby should be fun. These are comic books after all. Now, one more news item I think for today might actually is actually going to tie into uh, the streaming. So uh, we did uh, comic books. We just did some uh, movie news. Now let's look into the streaming side of things. And we had a mid-season kind of a or a second half of the season kind of trailer that's promoting X Men ninety seven. More things we might be getting. Granted, we already got ish episode six this past week. We still got a few more to go. Uh, with that, spoilers show a Captain America shield showing up interesting uh has captain america shown up in the x-men before yeah he has a few times uh but if we're going to align where they're pulling their inspiration from in the x-men 97 series uh and align it to where we might see captain america yes you can go to that 268 that classic cover with um black widow and wolverine absolutely madripoor sure Maybe they go that way, but I don't think we jump that far yet. I think that's in possibly our future. But for now, more in the wheelhouse of where we're doing this life death stuff, this uh, almost like the mutant massacre that we're kind of building towards. We're looking at those late 100s into the early 200s range of Uncanny X-Men. So that kind of lands us here. They've not shied away from doing Mojo Verse and some like weird mental dream state kind of things. We've been in space already. We've been in the Mojo verse. We, we've had the adversary invading storms, you know, basically her dreams and her subconscious, etc. Who knows where we might go? But in Uncanny X-Men 190, we are introduced to a villain who kind of makes this like weird, almost kind of like a fantasy story getting played out in uh, these two issues. So we've got an unnamed you know, weird fantasy world where we have an Avengers team that l looks a little different than the Avengers team that you might know. Uh, you've got Captain America looking almost like a barbarian. They're almost like Norse gods almost uh, as they play through this. But it's almost like a fantasy realm. So could we see this fantasy realm version of Captain America? That might be our best bet. Will it that be the version we see? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's a possibility. So let's look at this book because you know what? This book is cheap. It's cheap. So I'm talking about Uncanny 190. $3 at auction. 12 bucks. it sold with issue 189 through 192. So that's four issues for that $12. Uh, and then 5 bucks an individual sale. I'm going to buy it now. Not an expensive book. Not an expensive book at all. Asking prices, 3 bucks, 7 bucks, 8 bucks. You could find this out there. You can find this. It starts building. We got more locks. We got a lot of fun stuff that could still tie into where we are with X-Men 97, which, again, has not only been a great series to watch, it has been great for the aftermarket and the collecting community as a whole. It's reinvigorated a lot of sales and some excitement about comic books again, because too much of it got tied into, I think, of just rumored movie news spec and all that stuff that it got tiresome. Uh, but now it's kind of seems fun again, at least to me, this, this kind of stuff seems fun. So with that said, the storyline didn't end here with 190. It actually kind of carried through into 191 where it was wrapped up. So you might want to keep an eye out for this one as well, uh, because as they got out of the actual, what kind of like this fantasy dream world that Dr. Strange got them out of, uh, we did see Captain America kind of show up and it was interacting with the X-Men team. So maybe that's kind of what happens here. Maybe we get a villain, a one-off villain kind of does this weird fantasy thing, and then we get brought back to reality. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do yet. We only got, what, four episodes left? So we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. But let's keep an eye on this book, though, because this one actually will tie in to what we're doing next, which is why I'm not giving you pricing information on 191, because we are now going to roll into the comics portion of the show where I'm going to actually tie some of these books and first appearances into things if you're actually reading the comics. And one of the books that did come out this week was an X-Men book, Fall of the House of X, uh, number four, new this week. This is just the cover A, as you know, multiple, multiple covers here. But in this book, one of the primary antagonists is Nimrod. Why is that important? Well, the character of Nimrod actually first appeared in that book we just looked at, which is Uncanny X-Men 191. Granted, it's only like the final page or two at the back, but 
Nimrod does first appear here in this issue. And it has been a book that has been looked at a few times before, again, in the speculation cycle. But it's taken a ride up and down and back and forth, all of that. Right now, it is on the lower end of things. As you can see here with some recent sale prices, nine bucks, well, up to 15. And then $23 got somebody like a dozen books there. Look, it's like issue 189 all the way up through issue 200. So they got a bunch of books for $24. So there are cheap options out there, cheap ways, even online that you could find this. And I'm telling you, go dig on those boxes near your house. Whatever you have local to you, your half price books, books a million, whatever, second and Charles. These are places that I don't have near me, but I know some of you do. So go dig there. If you don't have those, check yard sales, check flea markets. I have flea markets and that kind of stuff here near me. Or just go check your LCSs and check their cheap boxes and their dollar bins. Now, going to have a tougher time of it when you're dealing with an LCS owner as opposed to somebody just running a yard sale who may or may not know what they have in their collections, but all of it's fun. It doesn't hurt to look. And with that said, this first appearance of Nimrod is also a book that even online you can see auctions starting at 99 cents and then nine to 10 bucks to buy one right outright. Still not an expensive uh, book to find, but a fun little one to go and dig out of there. There's a lot of these again out there on the out there on the market. This X Men was a very popular title. Uh, they printed plenty of them. I've seen these numerous times in those cheap boxes. Granted, condition may not always be the greatest, but you take what you can get depending on the price. You know, it's a, your call uh, at the end of the day what to do with your uh, your buck or two. So, you know, you decide what you want to do. With that said. Nimrod is not the only antagonist that is rolling on in this fall of the House of X series and the ending of this uh, Hickman era of uh, the Krakoa era of the X-Men. So we also have the uh, Omega Sentinel here also kind of just being involved, I guess, uh, in, in with this team. So uh, I forget what her name is. It's It's like. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Sorry, I'm drawing a blank. I did look at it before we started filming, but now that I'm rolling, I don't remember what her real name is. It's like Karima something. Uh, it's, a, there's, it's a long name. It's a long name. But she is the Omega Sentinel. She was kind of like converted into it with Bastion and we went from the huge mega-sized, kaiju-sized Sentinels to more smaller-sized, adaptable human-sized uh, sentinels like her who could, uh, I guess, kind of blend in and uh, fight with the uh, mutants. Uh, and we first saw her in X-Men Unlimited number 27 here. So inside the guts of this book. She's she's throughout this book, but we, we get introduced to her and or the story of how she was kind of made into this uh, Omega Sentinel. She can't hold it back uh, for much longer, etc. But another book. This has been specced on a little bit before, but it's one you could find for cheap. These X-Men Unlimited books, they are out there and they're buried in boxes because it's like an offshoot X title and one that often just gets thrown into the uh, cheap stuff. So uh, with that said, look for number 27. Somebody sold or somebody bought five copies of it for 22 bucks. So five copies of this issue. Uh, buy it now. Let, they accepted the best offer on $2.50. So probably like two bucks and then $13. So. I mean, prices can can range and vary uh, as far as what people will pay. Asking prices, you hit that market, there's copies out there for $250, $4, $6. Not an expensive book at all. One you can definitely still find out there for cheap. So if you want to go and dig for the first Omega Sentinel, there you go. You can find it there. Uh, and then another character rolling on in that uh, X book that we're uh, just looking at. Because, again, there's a lot of X characters here. I mean, we've got Magic, we've got Emma Frost. You're not finding their first or cheap, but other characters involved in the storyline and on the team that you might find for cheap are this guy right here. This is Manifold. Uh, related, one of the Aborigines uh, related with Gateway. You know, the, uh, down under the X-Men when they were down in Australia. Remember Gateway? He can controls and, uh, you know, portals and all that kind of stuff. But now we also have this character of Manifold, kind of a filling on a similar similar role almost he first appeared here in secret wars number four another book that's been on the site the spec cycle before but doesn't hurt to keep an eye out for it because it could come back again uh so we get manifold here being first introduced he again he's throughout this issue uh more than just this one panel but this was his first appearance in that book copy sold on this well nine eight sold for 125 bucks we don't normally look at nine eights here because we're talking dollar bin digging and the chances of finding a nine eight quality book in a dollar bin are always slim, but it's not that it can't happen because it can. 
Uh, but other than that, you can see six bucks. It's not selling for a ton of money right now. It is on the downslope on the 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 valley, I guess, of the roller coaster ride. It's definitely in a valley, not at a peak. Uh, but for right now, six bucks. Copies available as cheap as four bucks. Ten bucks can get you issues four, five, and six. Or somebody's still holding out for one of those higher prices, looking for twenty bucks for this first appearance of Manifold. Because again, this is something that came around once before. And uh, it's just coming back around again, I guess. But that's uh, a few characters based off of that uh, Fall of the House of X4 that you can go and look for their first appearances for. Uh, but in addition to that, we're going to stick again with the X-Men universe because, well, I'm biased towards the X-Men. And uh, I just am. And I freely admit that. So let's look at Dead X-Men number four. Not the greatest title in the world. Uh, has not been a great read in any sense of it. But doesn't mean... Interesting things and interesting characters can't be looked at throughout this series as all of this stuff's going to be rebooted and restarted soon anyway. So uh, with that said, Dead X-Men 4, a couple characters here that we can look at. I mean, you already know Jubilees, Cannonballs, uh, first appearances. So those are ones you're not going to find again for cheap. But if you look a little deeper, Frenzy, Prodigy, well, those might be a little more uh, attainable in our cheap digging. So let's start off with Frenzy, and this is, again, something we might have brought up before on whether it had been on TAC or we talked about here on Dollar Bin Digging months ago, but Frenzy is a character that's been around a while. She's actually been around since X-Factor when the original X-Men split off and became X-Factor, uh, and she was in the fourth issue of that series right here on the cover. Again, one of those books that's been on the cycle before, but just was falling off and is down in that valley along with uh, that Secret Wars number four. Uh, and for whatever reason, we're sticking with that number four, right? I mean, so we had Secret Wars number four. Now we have X Factor number four. Weird. Uh, but with this issue four first appearance, this is the book. Look, somebody got issues. Uh, you can get any of the issues between two and issue 50 for like a dollar fifty. So two fifty also will get you this issue. Recent sales, not an expensive book at all. Asking prices, three bucks, five bucks will get you issues two, three, and four. X Factor, again, was a decently printed title because it was the original X-Men. was a new series, a lot of publicity, a lot of excitement at the time back in the 80s. But you could find these out there. You can. So issue four, Power of Frenzy. It's only a few bucks. Will it become anything? Who knows? But again, this is why looking for comics is fun. Uh, hunting first appearances can be fun. Uh, and with that said, apart from Frenzy, the other character I mentioned was that of Prodigy. Uh, David something or other, I can't remember his last name, but David here first appears in another issue four. This time, New Mutants number four. Well, that all the number fours are all about today, but number four of this run of New Mutants. Looked at these before. These are the awesome Middleton covers. Uh, I love this run. I think we looked at issue eight of this run, uh, even just last week when we were looking at uh, Sur uh, Surge. Uh, was that one of their name? Yeah, I think we were looking at Surge. But here, a few issues before we get introduced to Prodigy. I don't. He's not going by the name of Prodigy yet at this time, but this is the character first being introduced, learning that he's a mutant, or his family learning that he's a mutant, and uh, him joining up with the new mutants here. Uh, so there's, hey, hey, David, you know, taking another class. So. There he is, Prodigy, in this issue. And this is one that, again, been here before, but $9.50 to 15 bucks. Some copies have sold for recently, so not terrible. And even copies that are asking for it, whether it be for the cover or the character, 12 bucks, 20 bucks, uh, and 20 bucks. Some of them listing first appearance of Prodigy, uh, first Prodigy, eh, you know, and some of them don't. Uh, but again, just another first you might go out there and find. Now, I realize that was a lot of Marvel, and I am a little biased towards Marvel, but I don't want to be completely on one side of the fence. So let's go on to look at one book over on the other side with the Distinguished Competition, and let's look at a DC book. Let's look at Superman number 13, The House of Brainiac Part 2. I was looking forward to this series. I like Brainiac, so I'm reading these. And uh, with that, let's look at what Part 2 has to offer of us, offer us with The House of Brainiac. And uh, what we do get are some little cameos of some interesting little characters that you might have forgotten about. Starting off with here, uh, we got Brainiac. He's got a lot of the super characters that he uh, locked up uh, from that first uh, issue. 
the action comics issue from uh, last week. Uh, and in this, we just get little cameos of other characters here where you can see this Metallo standing next to him as he is passing. Uh, and we're just learning a little bit more about Brainiac's plans and his allies, etc. But Metallo is a character, been around the block, been around before uh, Corbin something or other, I think his name is. Uh, but Metallo first appeared in Superman number one. Is Superman number one hard to find? It absolutely is not. Uh, not this one from 1987. This issue right here, uh, and, and you get Metallus right there on, on the cover, basically, just getting you warmed up. This one, three bucks, three bucks, five bucks. Not only is it not hard to find, it's not expensive right now. So you can get your first Metallo for only a couple of bucks. And it's Superman number one. It's the first issue of Superman. Uh, restarting it, you know. Copies available. Well, there are cheap copies, 99 cents starting auction, three bucks will buy now, uh, and 22.50. So somebody else is looking for a little bit of more money there on that $22.50. I'm also surprised there's 14 watchers on that $3 copy. Like out of the 14 of you, not one of you wants to pull the trigger on a book that's only three bucks. Are you hoping it's going to go down in price? Like, I don't know. What, what are you, why are you watching it? Like, what, what are you waiting for? Just curious. Just curious. Uh, but with that said, there are 14 watchers looking at that thing for $2.99. Uh, they accept best offers. Maybe you can get it for $2.50. Or even two bucks, maybe even less. Point being, go dig in a box, you'll go find one. With that said, let's go back to Superman number 13. And also in the issue, we do see Brainiac, but we see other versions of Brainiac helping Brainiac out here. And one of those being that big guy in the back, which is actually uh Brainiac number 13. Uh, and that's this, this big character, a lot of tubes and pipes, almost looks like a Iron Monger from the first Iron Man movie. This Brainiac was actually first introduced in Superman Y2K, uh, number one. So it's this weird one-shot special. Uh, and then that's where you get in this first appearance of this particular version of Brainiac. And this is, again, a book that's not expensive. So if you want to go and dig, it's a fun book to go and dig for. Auction ended with 98 cents. Copies sold for five, six bucks. Uh, available copies also very cheap two dollars three dollar options and then there's one listed for seven dollars but yeah not gonna get rich if you find this thing but again it's a fun little first you can go and find that kind of ties into things you might actually be reading as well and uh finally uh i got one more book that'll tie into the superman book one more character to talk about granted you don't really get a good look at her in here but this is lex luther's daughter lena luther too so he named his daughter after his sister. Uh, he had a long lost sister and then she's gone. And then he named his daughter after her, whatever. So in here, he's making a deal with Brainiac to get his daughter, Lena, released. So leave her out of this and he'll give you super band. So Lex, who has actually been helping uh, Clark and uh, all of his super family, I guess, uh, you know, he, Lex is also going family first and just trying to get his daughter out of this mess. So with that said, where did Lena Luther first show up? You guys like baby spec? I got baby spec for you because we can go to her first appearance. Here is Lena Luther too. Just so you remember uh, that she was a, a youngin. She first showed up here back in the blue Superman era, Superman 131. Uh, and she shows up at near the end of the issue uh, with Lex as a baby. So there you go. He's holding his daughter, showing her the world that he's going to try to prepare her for. But again, this is an electric blue Superman. Uh, so this is one of those uh, fun books that you could definitely find out there because nobody loved this run. Uh, this was not a popular run uh, for the title. So in looking at the copy sold here, we had only one that I could find, and it was 99 cents with one bid at auction. Uh, so not a lot of folks looking for this issue of uh, Superman, but uh, copies available are also very, very cheap, as you can find yourself copies for $2 and $3 uh, on the market right now, if you're interested in finding uh, Lena's first appearance. But uh, yeah, that's all I got for you this week. Hopefully you found that fun. Hopefully you found that entertaining. I am still enjoying doing this. It took me a, a little bit of a break to find that love of looking for these cheap, cheap books again. But I think I got a format and uh, something sustainable for me to try to keep doing this going forward again for you guys. Because I know a lot of you like and look forward to uh, these cheap books, options, and uh, things to go and dig. And uh, 
first appearances are always fun and uh that's the angle i'm still kind of sticking with for now but apart from that we do look at other series like i did with the werewolf by night where it's not all about first appearances sometimes it's just connectivity into things that just get you excited about comics again whether it be for the tv shows the movies or even reading the comics themselves uh hopefully this stuff is still uh entertaining to you and uh with that all said Got more comment, uh, more content coming your way uh, basically every day here on the channel. So, again, let's uh, keep this thing rolling forward and making sure that you all like, comment, subscribe, and all that fun stuff. And uh, I will be back soon. All right. Later.